Hey guys, it's Greg with jhdrums.com bringing you another drum mixing tutorial. In today's video, I want to talk about gain staging our tracks. Uh, previously, we went over creating buses, uh, making sure that our close mics were in the proper phase alignment with our overhead track. And uh, we also went over panning. So if you missed any of those previous parts, definitely go back and view those because that's where we are here in this video. So you need to uh, be up to date on those. And when I say gain staging, what I mean is making sure that our tracks are not clipping. We're monitoring our holds on our tracks, which are the little, in logic, the little orange numbers over top of our tracks. And uh, basically, monitoring the entire sum of every single track to make sure that it's going to be in a conservative gain level. Uh, when I say conservative, I mean anywhere between negative 10 to about negative 6 dB. That's, that's the safe area. That's going to allow for the headroom that we need within a digital uh, medium, and it's going to make our when, when it comes to mastering, if we're mastering, it's going to make our lives easier. If we're sending it off for mastering, uh, it's going to make the mastering engineer's life a lot easier, and uh, he'll be much happier with your product. So that's, um, that's gain staging in itself. Uh, and basically what we want to do is we want to find levels within those uh, terms. We want to make sure we're staying in that, that happy medium of 10 to 10 to minus 10 to minus 6 dB. So where I like to start is the overheads. And what I'll do is I'll just solo the overheads. So if I solo the overhead bus, I'm going to be able to hear both uh, overhead left, overhead right. So I'm going to select both of these tracks to simultaneously adjust the gain. And what I want to do is monitor my uh, hold. Again, if I click that, I'll remove the hold to make sure that it's in that, uh, you know, nowhere above the minus six range. Now, when I recorded these, the, the source was really hot. So if, if you, if we take a listen here, when I bring it up to Unity Gain, you'll be able to see that it does clip. See that? We're going into the red. For some reason, the, the left is obviously picking up more, but we're going, 2 dB over where we need to be, and that's not good. So that's what this the whole thing about gain staging is. The reason these were recorded so hot was to make the, the most use of uh, the transformers in my pre, uh, to get the most character out of them. I'm using the, the Great River MP500 MVs, and they, they're so transparent that I'm able to crank up volume, get that character without having any audible distortion. But... In our DAW, we want to make sure that those levels are conservative and we bring them down. So what I will do is I will play it, monitor it, and bring these down to make sure they're not clipping. And one of the main reason for those clips are the snare transients, because the snare is obviously the loudest instrument in this case coming through those overheads. Um, and I've got a little trick to show you to to kind of even out those dynamics. But just for now, let's go ahead and bring these down and get them into the proper level. I think around... All right, around minus six is gonna be good for me. What we can do, since these are being summed to our overhead bus, which we've created, we can actually adjust both the track simultaneously here. Um, that's where we'll monitor the overall output. But check this out. That trick I mentioned before, what we'll do is we'll add a plugin, in this case a compressor. In Logic, you go to Dynamics, Compressor, Stereo. And what we're going to do is create a side chain compression. And that is going to be keyed via our snare. Now I know that sounds like a lot of information, but it's really simple. Um, if we look over here at our snare top and snare bottom, we notice the output is bus one, and that's going to our snare bus. That's our key output that we want our compressor to recognize via the side chain. So what we'll do within our compressor, we'll go to side chain, 
we'll select bus one because that is the output of both the sum of our snare one and two, or snare top and bottom rather. And any of your favorite, uh, you know, settings for compression will work. I'm going to use a LA2A emulated setting. Uh, we want to keep our ratio relatively conservative, two to one, three to one is going to be fine. Uh, nothing too heavy. Our attack is going to be the same as if we were compressing snare. It's a very sharp transient, so we want to keep it around two milliseconds. Release, you can keep as auto, but typically for snare, you want to aim for, you know, around 200 milliseconds of a release is going to be fine. So let's go with, I believe that's 220 if I can see it correctly. Now, make sure that when we do this, we're, we're monitoring the snare bus as well so that it, the key will recognize. Uh, and we want to aim for about 3 to 6 dB a game reduction. So we'll go ahead and monitor that and get our th we'll, we'll adjust our threshold to match the reduction that we need. Go ahead and increase our output again. Cool. So check this out. If we actually listen to what I'll do, we'll preview it without this compression, uh, which is keyed VR snare, and then I'll engage it. And it'll almost be like I, you know, had a magic button to turn down the snare in our overhead tracks. Check this out. So again, this is without. And then we'll engage it. You hear how the symbols just come out? What that's doing is it's just evening the dynamics out, tucking that snare down in so we don't have those transient peaks pop out at us. And now we can actually go to our overhead bus and monitor the output and get it at the proper gain stage level. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll see we're still really hot there, so we want to be weary of that. See, around minus six is where we want to be. So that's good. That's a real handy trick to uh, not only keep our transients tame, but to really bring out the symbols in the mix. So that's just one handy tip. Let's go ahead and still soloing the overheads. Let's go to let's go to our snare. Um, the the snare and the kick are going to be the driving forces within the mix. So those are the two that we really want to focus on uh, when adding our close mics to our basically our overhead picture. So what I can do, now these are some to a bus, but I can, by soloing this bus, I can still monitor both these tracks and adjust them individually to get the sound we want. Snare top is gonna to be more representative of the pop or ping of the snare, and we could take a listen to that here. Let's just go ahead and mute the snare bottom I'm going to bring both these up to Unity Gain to have a better representation. Now this would be snare top. You hear that pop. And then if I mute that snare top and we just, I'm sorry, I got to select just a single track. Mute the snare top and just listen to the snare bottom. You can really tell the difference between the two. Snare bottom is going to be re more representative of the wires of our snare. So, of course, we want to make sure that those are uh, at the settings that we want them to be, uh, the correct mix. So that's completely subjective. That's up to you. Uh, I find that, you know, at least in this recording, about a 4 dB difference between the two gives us the best sum of top and bottom. Check this out.
and still monitoring those, I want to make sure that they're in a conservative level. I don't want them going too hot. Now the adjustment and the monitoring of the overall output we can do via our bus. So that's what we're, we're going to focus on here. And again, you could see we're in a good place or about minus eight dB. So we might want to bring that up. So we've got those where we want them. Let's, uh, you know, they're in, uh, the relationship that we want between top and bottom, but let's make sure that they are sitting with the overheads in the appropriate, uh, gain level. So we're listening to overheads and snare. So I can bring this one up. That snare really pops out. See how that's right around the 6 dB range? Or minus 6? So minus 3.4 looks good there. Um, that's our snare. That's a real quick version. I know I'm, I'm trying to not make this a super long video so you don't have to sit through this, uh, this thing too long. But let's move on to the kick drum. As I mentioned... It is a driving force, and we want to make sure that this is popping out at us. So we do want to keep a conservative level, but a good amount of gain on the kick as well. So let's listen to the kick in the overheads. And it's at four. I want to bring it down. Let's bring it down about 3 dB. And let's add our snare bus in as well. All right, so it seems like those are sitting well. If we take a look at the hold here on our kick, we're still in a good range. So the next thing's gonna be our toms. Toms, we want to be able to hear them, but they don't need to be as dominant as snare and kick, unless you want them to be. Again, there's no set rule, but I, generally I like to obviously have the snare and kick louder than my toms. I like my toms to fill in the gaps, so. Let's find a good place to monitor our toms, and we'll go ahead and bring those in individually. Tom one here. Make sure our loop is activated. And we'll go ahead and leave the kick and snare in there. Let's bring Tom one up to unity gain. We'll solo it, and we'll check out where we are with our hold and gain output. And notice we're around minus 10, and that's the, I'm happy with that. I, I know that my snare, my kick were more around the, the 7 range, so about 3 dB lower is, is cool with me. Uh, and again, we can adjust this later if need be. Let's move on to Tom 2, and this is a good section to listen to Tom 2 as well. Let's bring it up to Unity Gain. So we want to aim for about minus 10. And what's cool too with these holds is you can kind of even them out. Now, obviously drums are dynamic, each hit's gonna be a different volume, but overall you can kind of monitor their output and try to even them out. So, uh, you know, you don't have Tom one really quiet and then Tom two sticks out like a sore thumb. Now I am reaching seven here, so I might want to grab, but because they sound like they're in a good place uh, comparatively to one another, but I still want them to be, you know, less than the the kick and the snare. And again, they're averaging around 10 on the hold. So that looks good. Let's bring in Tom 3. 
Let's find a good pass. Now, Tom 3 is not hit very often in this uh, drum performance, so it's it's going to be better to select a shorter take to loop and actually monitor that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's bring it up to Unity Gain, and we will monitor it and get it to match our previous two toms. Whoa. See how that tom really popped out? So that one hit brought us up to about minus 2 dB. And if I'm going for 10, I'm going to want to bring it down to about 8. Now that may be overkill. Let's uh, check out another pass where it's a little bit more busy here. Again, this is, you know, a process that you have to do listening to the entire mix. I'm doing this quickly, but it's it's an evolving thing. As you listen to the mix, you got to adjust your faders, and it's best to listen to the whole thing through to make sure that you're in a good position. So Eleven. These are around minus eight. The same. We'll go ahead and bring this up. Okay, and that's just a real quick version. The nice thing uh, about this, if later I want to, you know, I'm saying, okay, I don't have enough tom in the mix. I can just grab all three, bring them up and down if I want to. Or I can actually create a bus for the toms, just like we did with the snare and the overheads, and adjust them that way. But um, always make sure that we are in an optimal relationship uh, with our gain. You could see here, I may be a little bit hot on my drum bus. I'm still holding it around five, which is okay for now. When we get into adding EQ, compression, things like that, that's going to change but I may want to bring that down another dB just to stay in a conservative level. Um, but let's give her one final listen and make sure everything's where it needs to be. See how we're hovering around six. And that's it guys, uh, nothing to, you know, technical about it. It's just finding the right levels and making sure you're not clipping and keeping everything conservative. You don't need to make it as loud as you possibly can. That's actually going to hurt you in the end. Uh, the, the evolution of recording before, you know, in an analog recording, you wanted to avoid noise floor. Uh, and you did want to basically take every input, every fader and basically get it as close to clipping without clipping as possible. But in the digital domain, we don't need to do that anymore. We have a completely crystal clear signal that we need to leave some headroom and to allow our mastering engineers or ourselves to uh, limit, compress, and make the, the final product a more dynamic, uh, you know, easier to listen to, loud, uh, end result. So take this into account when mixing drums and uh, definitely monitor your gain output as you do this, guys. Do this, implement it, make better drum mixes. Uh, again, if you have any questions, comments uh, about this uh, tutorial, this series, leave them in the, the comments below. I'm happy to uh, give any feedback I can. And uh, we will see you in the next video, guys. Again, Greg for jhdrums.com, and we will see you soon. Thanks.